Welcome back everyone. So it's been almost two months since I've been back to work from maternity leave and David of course is great about keeping you all up to date on Amelia's progress. And it just so happens today she turns five months old. Now she's been an absolute joy. Motherhood has been wonderful, but like many new moms, there was a period where I struggled with more than just the baby blues. It really opened my eyes to the fact that we prepare for pregnancy, we prepare for the birth, but it's the days, the weeks, and even the months that follow that also require some planning. And for so many women, postpartum depression becomes a reality. I'm part of the nearly 30% of Alaskan moms who suffered from symptoms of postpartum depression, a topic that most moms are reluctant to talk about publicly, most fear the shame of a stereotype. But in sharing my own story and the experience of others who bravely shared their stories with me, we collectively hope to help others who may be suffering in silence. Here's my story. 12, 17 a.m., uh, she was born. Healthy baby girl, seven pounds, six ounces, 20 inches long. Eating the hands is the new craze now, yeah. Reality pretty much set in the day that we were discharged and came home. He was getting ready to take a shower and she was in her car seat as beautiful and as peaceful as ever and quiet. And I was sitting right here and I just looked at her and then it hit me. I felt like the entire nine months, the delivery all just hit me at one time. I didn't realize the feelings, how intense they would be until I just had this beautiful baby. This is what I've always wanted. I have a supportive husband and family. You know, why do I still feel just this overwhelming feel feeling of like sadness? I took a breastfeeding class. I read about it. I talked to other moms about it. And I was like, oh, okay, the baby has to latch. Sure, how hard can that be? Until you go through it, you realize, wow, this is pretty intense. The breastfeeding part, I had no idea how torturous it was. Like it is, it is, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever seen somebody have to go through. You could just see the torment on her face every time that she was doing it. Every time I was just like, oh my gosh. It gave me a whole newfound respect for the strength of women. You know, the lactation consultant would come in, it would work, and then when the lactation consultant would leave, it wouldn't work. I literally would look at the clock and I would start to get really, really anxious because I knew I was having such a hard time breastfeeding. When she was going through this pain, I had this anxiety level that made me very concerned because I knew that she was depressed and I knew every time she breastfed, which is like every two hours, and it failed, I felt that pain, I felt scared, I felt, I, it almost drove me into depression because I knew that, I knew she was falling apart. She would blame herself. She was just, she was very, very hard on herself, the constant crying you know, and not being able to console somebody that just can't get out of their own head. No matter how many times I said, you know, uh, everything's gonna be okay, or you can do it, or, you know, quiet supportiveness, it just wasn't enough. She needed, she needed something outside of this house. I just told her that I think the best thing for her to do is to go to counseling and she was pretty reluctant to try to want to go. I was like, I, man, I just had her. Do, is this baby blues? Do I need to give myself some time? Or do I need to go see a counselor right away? I said the next best thing is I think you just need to get on some sort of um, support system. Every two hours, contact one of your friends and find another friend that you need to contact. And if you're up, you need to be contacting someone to keep your mind going and to keep your spirits going. <laughs> Once you started to hear from one mom, another story, their story, like it just started to like he like just open up this world of like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Oh, it just was like a pressure cooker. And every time you heard a mom share her story about something that you have gone through, or maybe that just happened to you the night before, it slowly started to release the pressure. She just became more lighthearted, uh, less worried, more happy, more um, focused and appreciative, and just felt like she could do it. It is okay to say, yes, I had a baby. 
yes, it's great and we loved it, but I had a really hard time adjusting and dealing with it. Yes, I went through some depression. I went through some anxiety. It is okay to say those words. Now I look at it, you know, totally different. It's like, oh man, she got this mommy thing down. <laughs> well, it made me closer to my wife. It's a pretty freaking strong woman that I got here. Regardless of how little or how big, talking about it is the way to go, reaching out resources, uh, because if you don't, it's, it's just gonna swallow you whole. Going through all those dark days and tough times, you, you look at your baby and you're like, I, I gotta be, I gotta get me together because I need to be the best mom I can be for her. Wow. That little face wow. mm. is why oh, yeah. you do it. Yeah. yeah. I've got all the tears out before and watching it. No, mm. um, tomorrow, it's, so this is a four part series. In part two, we're going to actually hear from three other local moms who suffered from postpartum. They share their deeply personal stories and what it took to finally recognize and get help and what they did to overcome it. But that's Powerful. my story. Powerful. Nice yeah. job. And Thank we mentioned you. how many people you're helping by doing this. Yes. And what a tough time it is when babies are such a huge thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. so much celebration. There's so much congratulations going on. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to put up that front. And then all of a sudden when you're alone, you can kind of withdraw and pull in yeah. and have some issues. I mean, yeah. I mean, I had a great pregnancy, a great birth, and the nurses tend to you 24-7. And like I said, it really, I felt all hit me at one time that day that we got home and it just, you know, it's just you and your partner mm -hmm. and your baby and, and that's it and so. Well, let's talk about the part, I mean, Jules played a huge part in this. He did, yeah, and you know, interviewing him and seeing it from the dad's perspective and he, you know, they're, they have to watch you go through that too. The moms are, they're there, but like he said, he was there and kept telling me it's gonna be okay and encouraged me and it just seemed like I needed something more, but I took his advice. I started to do counseling and I went to the mommy groups, which we'll talk more about later on, some of the resources that are available to women. And plus living in Alaska, you know, one in seven moms in the United States suffers from symptoms mm -hmm. of postpartum in Alaska. That number goes to one in three. Wow. So. Well, wow. well, sometimes separation, maybe distance, maybe yeah. darkness, a lot mm -hmm. of other things may be involved with yeah. that. But uh, great to see the rest of this story. I can't wait yes, to see it. Yes, thank you. And we'll have the story online, uh, ktuu.com. So we want, if you know a new mom out there or just a moms in general, even dads, go ahead and please share, share, share the link. Mm -hmm. it's definitely no, the a, feedback is tremendous yes. on this so far. Thank yeah. you.